In the previous session, we were discussing about the probability of cal about uh, calculation of the probability of committing type one error, type two error, and the power of the test. Here also, I'm going to continue with that by showing you few more problems on this particular issue. Okay, so here is another type of problem that is uh, coming for you. Let me write the name of the topic that I'm going, I'm actually discussing over here. It is about calculation of alpha, beta, and one minus beta. Okay, it is the continuation of previous session of today's class. So those who are who will who are going to watch the video from this particular if someone watches this particular video first then he will know that he must see the previous video first and then he has to come back over here so the question the third question that i'm going to give you is is the following let capital x be a random variable following a normal distribution with parameter mu with mean mu and variance 4 with mean mu and variance 4 where 4 is variance why am i writing this because sometimes in some authors write x follows n mu sigma or sometimes it is also in the practice to write n x follows n mu sigma square so you have to know whether it is this it is discussing about the sigma or the sigma square so it has to be specifically mentioned if nothing is mentioned then you consider this one always in the examination now if the examination is since the examination will be of mcq type and suppose in the examination this sort of ambiguities are there they have not specifically mentioned uh, whether four is variance or sigma, sigma square or sigma. Then in that particular case, uh, suppose you are assuming this as I'm telling you to assume, but the answers are not matching after the calculation, then you can try with uh, sigma equal to four, and then you, you have to redo it. Probably uh, this sort of, uh, ambiguities may be present in the question paper here they are writing that capital x is following normal distribution but you see uh, the information about this population mean is actually not known so we want to test the null hypothesis that either the population mean is minus one or the alternative hypothesis, which states that the population mean is plus one. Based on a sample of size 10 from this population. from this population. We use the critical region if uh, x1 is the first value of the sample plus twice the second value of the sample plus thrice the third value of the sample and in this manner 10 times the 10th, 10th value of the sample if this summation is greater than or equal to zero that is your critical region question is what is the size of the test what is the 
power of the test. Okay. Whenever they are writing what is the size of the test, that means you are they are actually trying asking you to find alpha. Whenever they are asking you to find power of the test, that means they are interested in one minus beta. You can directly calculate one minus beta by using the definition, or you can calculate the probability of type two error, and then you can subtract that probability from one. I always ask you, I only I'll always tell you to calculate by this uh, this approach. First of all, you calculate beta and then one minus beta. In this way, you will get to know what is the probability of committing type two error also. Even if you calculate one minus beta directly, it's okay. Because if one minus beta is calculated, then if I subtract one minus beta from one, you'll get beta, same thing. So whatever you like, you can do. Now, this is the scenario. I hope that you have understood, but uh, the probability distribution about the probability distribution, if you are thinking what sort of probability distribution it is following, one conflict may arise, may come to your mind is that we generally know that when n tends to infinity, the sample size is too large, we actually uh, go for the normal distributions case, because a normal distribution is a continuous uh, distribution. Okay. But here the sample size is 10. So it is actually the case binomial approximation to normal. Okay, so actually this is from this is the underlying case where from where this particular thing has been derived. Uh, so if it is required, then we'll use it. Otherwise, I to just let you know I'm writing it. Now, let us proceed with the problem. First of all, I will define the critical region properly. The critical region is I'm denoting this by W and it is the set of all such points all such x size for all i 1 to up to 10 such that x1 plus 2x2 plus 10x10 10 greater than or equal to 0 that is your critical region and to, to, to simplify thing let us call this huge variable this particular form that is given let us name it by another variable which is u just to cut things short i'm renaming it as this so that we can use it so my critical region is simply u greater than or equal to zero okay Since x i's for all i are i i d, what is i i d? The full form of i i d is independently and identically distributed. Independently and identically distributed. That means whenever you are choosing the sample, what you are the drawing of the sample, subsequent drawing of the sample is independent of the previous drawing. So each of the samples have been drawn independently. These 10 items have been drawn independently. And identically means each of them is actually following uh, the normal, uh, each of them has been uh, uh, selected from a population which is normal. So all of them are identical. It is not like that one particular sample is following is from a population which is normal and another sample is from a population which is uh, exponential, not like this. So all of these variables are 
independently and identically distributed following normal distribution following normal distribution n which mu 4 as it is given now my variable u is this one my variable u is this okay so this individual xi follow normal distribution with this mean so x1 is actually following a normal distribution with mean mu and variance 4 x2 is following normal distribution with mean mu and variance 4 and so on therefore u means this variable will follow a normal distribution where the mean will be the first sample value one into population mean mu plus twice x2 two into population mean mu plus three into population mean mu plus dot 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 plus 10 into population mean mu this is a theorem if one random variable follows uh, theorem was that if x1 follows normal distribution with mean mu1 x2 follows normal distribution with mean mu2 then x1 plus x2 follows normal distribution with mean mu1 plus mu2 if x1 and x2 are independently and identically distributed random variables that result has been applied over here and the variance will be as you know variance of a x is a square variance of x so this will be one square into sigma square plus two square into sigma square plus three square into sigma square plus 10 square into sigma square so i am putting a star over here because this part is very important one particular theorem has been used over here this is my page one take a snapshot or if you are writing along with me then it is all right i am going to the next page okay so this implies u follows normal distribution with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 10 mu and 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus dot 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 10 square is equal to sigma square now we have to go back to our school days and we have to calculate this ap series which is 10 into 10 plus 1 by 2 which is 10 into okay so 55 and we have to consider this ap series also which is 10 into 10 plus 1 into 2 into 10 plus 1 plus or oh, divided by 6 so 10 into 11 into 21 by 6 which is which is thirty five into eleven. Thirty five into eleven means three eighty five. So this implies U follows N 
55 mu and 385 sigma square. But wait, we know what sigma square is. Mu is unknown, but sigma square is not unknown. Sigma square is known and which is four. So this implies U follows normal distribution 385 into 4, which implies U follows a normal distribution 55 mu, and 385 into 4 gives you 4. So that is the thing that we have obtained. This is our setting. So this setting has been done. Let us now calculate the probability of committing type 1. Now let us come to the main portion of our problem. Now, alpha is the size of the test or size of the critical region or or probability of committing type 1 error or level of significance. So different names are there for this. So <clears throat> size of the test means probability of committing type 1 error. That means probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. That means when the points are actually following the critical region, given that null hypothesis is true, according to our notation, it is probability that u greater than or equal to zero this is my critical region when h naught is true or probability that u greater than or equal to zero and h naught is true means mu is equal to minus one and you know that this this probability is calculated by if you can standardize the variable random variable u to standardize the random variable, we need to use this formula, u minus eu by sigma u. This is called the standardization formula, so that we can get the variable z. So this would be probability of u minus eu by sigma u greater than or equal to zero minus eu by sigma u given that mu equal to minus one which is your eu bus so this is the thing now this is equal to probability of u minus eu by sigma u that is your z standard normal variable greater than or equal to now mu is equal to expectation of the random variable which is nothing but minus one okay but one one thing this is sorry this there is there has to be a correction this is not your expectation of u sorry this is not your expectation of u expectation of u is this one so i have to write something over here so expectation of u is 55 mu variance of u is 1540 sorry this is the thing now whenever i am putting expectation of u over here that means we have to put we have to put minus eu minus eu means minus 55 mu divided by sigma u sigma u means root over variance of u this is the thing probability of z greater than or equal to oh one more thing you have to write here or you can write over here also such that mu is equal to minus one 
So what you can do now, you can put, you can substitute the value of mu over here. So you will get minus 55 into minus one, which is 55 root over by under square root 1540. That is the thing that we are getting over here. And if you calculate this, this would be probability of Z greater than or equal to. So it is uh, coming out as, according to my calculation, 1.4015. Okay. And suppose this is your normal curve, standard normal curve. And this is your Z equal to zero. At this point, I'm writing Z equal to 1.4015. So we are actually supposed to find this probability. And this can be done by subtracting Z less probability of Z less than 1.4015 from one. And if I use the normal table, this probability that Z less than, if you have the normal table with you, so 1.4, how much you are getting? 1.40. If I consider 1.40 in the normal table, it is 0 0.9192. You can check it. This probability is 0 0.9192 from normal table. And if I subtract 0 0.9192, we will get 0 0.0808, 0 0.0808. 0 .08. Okay, so this is coming. You just check if, it, if there is any mistake, you can tell me. Okay, so this is my, according to my calculation, I have got this. This is your alpha. Let us now calculate beta. What is beta? Beta is the probability of committing type two error. Probability of committing type two error. or probability that H not is accepted, H not is accepted when H one is true. Probability that H not is accepted means the values are not in the critical region. That means U is less than zero, H one is true which is probability that u less than zero where h1 is true now this time we are assuming the population mu to be mu equals to one okay so we are going to calculate the probability so as before we are going to standardize the thing u minus e u by sigma u less than zero minus EU by sigma U, mu is equal to one. We know that expectation of U is 55 mu and variance of U is 1540. So, probability of u minus u by sigma u, that is your z less than 
put minus 55 mu over here by sigma u means under square root 1540 and mu equals to 1. We are going to put probability z less than minus 55 into 1. So minus 55 by root over by under square root 1540 one, which is probability of z less than minus 1.4015 as before okay now if i want to draw the normal curve once again so this is my normal curve z equal to zero this is my point i am actually magnifying the thing so that's why i have put a large gap over here intentionally this is the point so I'm interested in finding the probability this according to what we have got. And similarly, if I consider another point over here at equidistant, so this probability and that probability, they are same, you know. So we can write it as equal to probability that Z is greater than 1.4015. And This is equal to probability. Okay. Uh, if it is so, then we can write it as one minus probability of Z less than 1.4015. Okay. I think uh, I have not done any mistake over here. two probabilities are actually coming same. So, so that's why I'm thinking if I have done any mistake, I'm just checking it. So you just also check the calculation. So whether my calculation is all right, because two probabilities are actually coming same. Here, <clears throat> Fifty-five and this and this is z greater than or equal to I am put mu equal to minus one, so we got this this one, and which is equal to one minus a probability of z less than one point uh, this one, and that is uh, from the calculation we have got this, and in the next page we have substituted this, which is indeed which is indeed uh, uh, same as probability of z greater than point. Okay, so it looks the same to me. I mean, I mean, I'm unable to find any mistake right now. So here actually we are getting uh, the same thing. Okay, same calculation is coming. So I am asking all the students to calculate, go through the calculation once again, if find any, if I have done any mistake or not. I don't think I have done any mistake, but still uh, you, uh, if you find anything and uh, yeah, probability of, Vanshita Agarwal is writing, why Vanshita probably one minus probability of Z greater than 1.40, why is it so? Uh, you can unmute yourself and tell me. This side's probability, this probability and that probability, they should, they are actually same. Okay, 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 it's correct. Now these two probabilities are actually same. That's why. Uh, uh, I'm not saying that there is an error, but since the two problems suddenly has got this, the level of significance and the probability of committing type two error, they are same. So I am actually um, trying to make sure that my calculation is all right. When I'll upload the video in the YouTube, 
after that while going through the video once again if you find any defect then you write in the comment section then there lies the defect and i'll rectify it right now i'm i'm unable to find any defect anyways the two probabilities are coming same so here we see alpha is equal to beta actually generally what happens if one of the error if alpha increases beta always decreases so actually or or if alpha decreases beta also in beta increases so actually there is a kind of uh, negative correlation between the two probabilities here the two probabilities this is a kind of situation where the two probabilities are actually coming out to be similar okay and the power of the test will be and power of the test will be 1 minus beta which is point nine one nine. Okay, so just go to the problem once again. This calculation that I have done, I started solving the calculation from this page. This is my approach by which we can, we are, I have proceeded with the calculation. The book from which I have selected the problem, the answer is not given. So I am unable to match the answer also. Okay. So, so this is the thing that actually is very important. And if you are um, going to, if you are going to sit for any examination, statistical examination, uh, there they put lots of emphasis on this particular section alpha beta and one minus beta because entire statistical theory is actually based upon these important concepts you can generalize your problem to from univariate case to multivariate case but even also the concept of level of significance and power of the test remains very basic and therefore it is uh, I think all the students has to be very careful about uh, this, this type of problems. I'm giving you one problem as homework. So the problem is let X have a PDF of the form F X comma theta one by theta e to the power minus X by theta another form of exponential probability a little bit different from the previous one theta is positive and zero elsewhere to test to test h naught theta is equal to two against H one theta equals to one. Use random sample. Use random sample X one comma X two of size two and define. Critical region W is equal to the pair X one comma X two such that 
x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 9.5 find alpha beta 1 minus beta this is one problem another problem i'm giving you given the density function fx comma theta is equal to 1 by theta 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to theta and 0 elsewhere and that you are testing the null hypothesis h naught theta equal to 1 against h1 theta equals to 2 by means of a single observed value x determine alpha beta 1 minus beta and critical region is x greater than or equal to 0 0.5. Another example, the null hypothesis H naught mu equal to 7 tested against H1 mu equal to 6 where mu and sigma are mean and SD of normal distribution. Given sigma equal to 2, the test is performed by drawing a random sample of size 25 from a population and using best critical region at 0.16 level of significance find beta these are the problems that you can practice at home if you find any difficulties you can later tell me take a quick snapshot of this with this i'm going to conclude my today's session hope you have understood and enjoyed.